Hey, how's it going? So this tutorial is all about the WAMP server application and it's essentially for people who are looking to build a WordPress website and even if you have no idea even where to begin um, th this, this, is, this is a good tutorial for you because essentially what I'm going to be showing you how to do is to set up and run a WordPress website before having it go online as a live website so you can see how WordPress works and how it functions and how your particular website will look before ever putting it online and WAMP server is really awesome I personally use it and it's a Windows web development environment it allows you to create web applications with Apache, PHP, and the MySQL database. Now I'm just going to quickly go over what the WAMP stands for in WAMP Server. It essentially refers to a set of free open source applications that is combined with Microsoft Windows and commonly used in web server environments. The WAMP stack provides developers with the four key elements of a web server. The W is for operating system, Microsoft Windows, which is the operating system I'll be using in this tutorial. The A is for web server, which is Apache. It's an Apache web server. And Apache, what it does is serves web pages from machines to the internet. And you might be thinking to yourself, what, well, what's a web server in the first place? A web server is the software that receives your request to access a web page. It's as simple as that. And next we have the M letter, which stands for MYSQL, or MySQL, as it's pronounced. MySQL is a freely available open source RDBMS, which stands for Relational Database Management System. And it uses a structured query language, or SQL for short. And it's the most popular language for adding, accessing, and managing content in a database. All of your WordPress content IDs and other information is stored inside of MySQL. And finally, the P in WAMP stands for the web scripting software, which is written in PHP. PHP is the language of many websites out there. And what it does is communicate between the MySQL and Apache. And since we're working with WordPress, you should know that WordPress is written in PHP, and that's why it works for the WAMP. You need PHP on the machine in order to work with a WordPress website. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do is download and install WAMP server. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the website www.wampserver.com slash en for English and go ahead and pull this site up. And from here we're going to go ahead and choose the PHP version that we wish to install. So I'm going to click on start using WAMP server. Now ideally you're going to be using the same version WAMP server that your WordPress hosting provider will will be using but for now I'm just going to install the latest the WAMP server 64 bits and PHP 5.6.15 and PHP 7 and I'm just going to go ahead and click download directly and once you have that file downloaded we're going to go ahead and open it up and I'm going to leave a lot of the default settings in the installation so I'm going to go ahead and click next I accept leave the default install location and go ahead and install the program. And during the installation, a, a window is going to pop up asking you what you want your default browser to be. I prefer Chrome, so I'm going to just go ahead and navigate to the Chrome folder. And I'm going to go ahead and go to Program Files and go down to Google, open up Chrome, go to Application, and just click on Chrome.exe and just click Open. And for the SMTP and email, I'm just going to leave it as the default and just click Next. And I'll go ahead and launch WAMP Server 2 now. Now, once you open up WAMP Server, you're going to see its status down in the system tray, the notification area. If it's green, that's a good thing. That means that all services are up and running. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and open up Chrome. And what I want to type in is HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost and that should bring you to the WAMP server home screen which is this right here what we're gonna do is open up PHP my admin and we're gonna want to create a database and a user so I'm gonna click on databases write a database name I'll just call it test database and click create you can see the test database down on the list here and I'm just going to click test database which opens up the database 
and I'm going to go over to privileges and click add user I'm going to come up with a username I'll just come up with Austin only and for host I'm going to select local and I'm going to want to use a very strong password here I'm going to retype the password and I'm not going to select any of these global privileges at the bottom our user only needs to access the WordPress database so I'm going to just go ahead and click go now WordPress will be able to communicate with the server one of the cool things about using WAMP server is that we can create as many WordPress websites as we want because they're offline and so what you're going to want to do is navigate to the the default directory is the C drive WAMP www okay this is where you're going to be storing your projects or your websites so what I'm going to do is go ahead and make a new folder and I'll go ahead and type Austin's underscore cool underscore website okay and this is where I'm going to want to put all my WordPress files to get the WordPress files we're going to go ahead and open a new tab and I'm going to go to www.wordpress.org slash download and go ahead and download WordPress the newest version 4.5.3 once it downloads what I'm going to want to do is extract the files using whatever program you want to use I'm going to use the 7-zip application and like I said I'm going to want to extract the WordPress files right to that C drive WAMP www Austin's cool website okay I'm just going to go ahead and click OK and click OK to extract all of those files right to this folder and I'm going to navigate to that folder while it's extracting and when you open up the folder you can see that WordPress is in here and actually now that I look at it uh, the WordPress has its own folder when it, when it extracted I'm going to go ahead and pull all of the contents of that WordPress folder by cutting them and I'm going to paste them right inside Austin's cool website you want these you want the inside of your project folder to look just like this. And now, using Chrome, I'm just going to go ahead and go to HTTP colon forward forward slash localhost slash Austin's underscore cool underscore website. And you can see the WordPress icon, and you, we can start to configure our website. So what I'm going to do is, is go ahead and leave it on English, click continue, and I'm going to click let's go. And this is where we're going to enter in the information that we put into the WAMP server originally. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and click the database, or type the database name that I created. So test database, and the username was Austin only. For table prefix, I'm going to type Austin's prefix and just go ahead and click submit and then I'm gonna click run the install and this is where I'm gonna come up with some of the basic WordPress information so site title Austin's cool website my WordPress user I will just come up with a username Austin only and initially it's gonna give you a password that you have to use so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and you're gonna to wanna to put your email in and just go ahead and click install WordPress then I'm gonna click log in and this is where we're gonna use that generated password so I'm gonna type Austin only and paste in that password and click log in and you can see we're at the WordPress dashboard now I have another tutorial that goes all over the WordPress dashboard and how to use it once you start running WAMP server say you just restarted your computer and you want to open up WAMP server, make sure it's running, you want that green W icon in your system tray. The way to get to your website is to just type HTTP colon forward forward slash localhost slash the name of your website. In my case it's Austin's underscore cool underscore website. And you can see this is the generic startup website items whenever you start a WordPress site. But if I wanted to log in to the administrator on this website, what I'm going to do is add a forward slash wp hyphen admin at the end of that URL. 
and you can see you're at your dashboard and you can start configuring your website and I thank you guys for watching I hope you subscribe if you enjoy these kinds of videos and I hope you have a great day